everybody. Thank you for joining us today for today's live of how to make a t-shirt quilt the unconventional way. So if you are an OCD person or you do everything following the rules, then go ahead and quit watching my video now because I'm going to make you cringe and you're going to probably never listen to any more advice I ever give because today I'm going to break all the rules with t-shirt quilts. Um, I have made lots and lots of t-shirt quilts and I used to follow all the rules and I hated making them and quite honestly I still don't really like making them but my son is going to be graduating high school hopefully this year and I always promised that I would make him a t-shirt quilt for graduation so I'm going to make it for him for Christmas so this week I started making it and I decided since I had to do a live this week and I had no idea what I was going to do, maybe I should just show y'all how I make t-shirt quilts. Um, so let me show you what it looks like so far. Do not judge me by this because all my other quilts don't look like this, I promise. So my t-shirt quilts are a hodgepodge, okay? They are cut however they need to be fit to be cut. So none of my squares are the same size. And to make them the same size, I will just add scraps of fabric to them. Um, and then I just put squares of t-shirts together and go, oh, these are the same size, so I'll sew these two together. So I'm just gonna show you a glimpse of it for just a second. Can they, can, I've got my microphone attached to me, so it's kind of hard. So here's a little glimpse of it, okay? You can see that there's just scraps of fabric sewn in between, okay? Y'all will get a better look at it in just a second. Um, now, let me tell you a few things of why mine's unconventional. Not only are mine not uniform looking, but I don't use stabilizer because I got to the point of every time I would quilt a t-shirt quilt with stabilizer, my needle would get gummy, my thread would start shredding, my thread would start breaking, and I would get so aggravated. And then on top of that, because of the stabilizers, my t-shirt quilts would get stiff and heavy and they weren't cuddly anymore. And it was, I, I just was like, I don't like this. So I decided one day when I made a t-shirt quilt to not use stabilizer and just see what happens. And I was so happy with the end result of how it felt. And to me, the end user is not a quilter. So they're more happy with how it feels and how it looks to them than the way it is for us. So when I gave that quilt away, they were so happy with it that I realized I'm not using stabilizer anymore. Plus, I hate stabilizing t-shirt quilts. That takes a whole darn day. So that was a whole day out of my work of having to make that t-shirt quilt. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you, now this is the way everybody just about does it, how I deconstruct a t-shirt. So here is a t-shirt right here that I haven't done anything with, okay? Sometimes I use the front and sometimes I use the back. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut the sleeves off and cut the collar off. So I'm going to do that real quick and I just use my scissors to do that. Okay. So I'm going to cut the sleeves off. And I'm going to cut this collar off. I'm trying to salvage as much as a t-shirt as possible. Okay. So, so far that's what it looks like. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut right here at the top where the sleeves and the collar had met. And then I'm going to cut up the sides of the t-shirt so that the front and the back are separated from each other. Okay, so there's the front, okay, and then here's the back. Now from here, most people would go ahead and now stabilize their t-shirts. And then they would nice and neatly use a square and square them up to the size that they want all their t-shirts to be. What Kelly does is Kelly then takes the t-shirt and I just simply take a square, and I'm not gonna actually do this all the way right now, and I just flop my square down and I go, ooh, that looks about centered. I don't perfectly make sure that my seven's centered on my block, but pretty much one hand on one side, one hand on the other, and then I cut around that square, and I throw that square over to the side, and I go to my next t-shirt. 
and I might use my 12 and a half inch square on this one and then I might get a t-shirt that's really big and I might use my 16 and a half inch square on it. Or I might be able to do 16 and a half in one direction but I'm not able to do it in the other direction so it might not be, it might be a rectangle. I don't care. I will add fabric to it to make it whatever size I need. Once I've cut all my t-shirts out, I then lay them on the floor and I try to just visually make each column all the same length but not necessarily the same width. So I just visually will lay them on the floor and go, ooh, they're lining up pretty good. There might be an inch or two difference. I'll fix that at the end. And then as I do that and I lay out the way I like the colors to hit and the numbers and whatever, then I will start making each one of those columns the same width and so the columns lengthwise. And then once I've got all the columns made, I'll sew the columns together, make sure they're all the same length and my t-shirt quilt top will be constructed, okay? So that's how I construct the top. And I'm gonna show you the top in just a little while when I lay it on the back. I now wanna to talk to you about, let me make sure, let me look at my notes real quick and make sure I didn't forget something about that. No stabilizer. Okay, yeah, so far I'm good. Okay, so now what I wanna tell you is I do another thing that makes t-shirt quilts a little difficult, but it's the end result again. Um, a lot of us don't like to put minky on the back of quilts, but I absolutely love the way it feels. So, you can turn the camera this way. My daughter is my camera lady today, and she's doing a very good job. Um, so I am going to be putting Minky on the back of this quilt and I wanted you to go ahead and see how I have it loaded. See how it's got a bit of a dip, okay? My clamps are already on, but they're, ooh, come closer because my mic, okay. My, my clamps are not pulling, okay? Okay, they're just clamped on there to keep it from getting um, a wrinkle, but it's not tight from bar to bar. Now, I have pinned it selvage to selvage and the stretch is going from pole to pole, okay, the stretch of the fabric. Because of that, I have to be very careful that I do not tighten my poles too tight or else my quilt will curl when I take it off the frame from me accidentally tightening it too tight. So when you have the stretch going from pole to pole, you've got to be very careful. Now, another thing, you're going to see that my pins are closer together where I pinned it on my leaders than what I normally do because it is minky, okay? I do put more pins in my backing when I am pin pinning minky, okay? So that's my backing, okay? Now, my camera lady, we're gonna have to walk to the back, so this is gonna be the tricky part. I wanna show y'all a trick that I do. I'm ready to cut my batting for my t-shirt quilt. You might have to take us off the stand because I'm connected to you and it's a tight fit. You can do this. <laughs> okay. Come on. Okay, so I want to show you a, a great safe, a safe, a great space saver. So my quilt top, woo, um, is about 83 by 83. So I'm going to cut 90 inches of batting. I use the back of my quilt frame as my cutting table. I have a roll of batting on the batting bar on my frame. And I am going to take my measuring tape. And I've already pulled this out just to make it easier. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna just pull my batting until I get to that 90 inch mark that I'm looking for. I don't know if I showed y'all this on another video, so if I have, I apologize, but it won't hurt for you to watch it again. Okay, so there's my 90 mark. I'm gonna use this edge of my track as my kind of like my ruler or my guide to know to cut it straight. Okay, come a little bit closer because I gotta pull, pull, pull. And I'm going to take my batting scissors and I'm just going to cut my batting now. Wow, how easy was that? I didn't have to battle my batting on my cutting table or anything. And now I'm just going to let that roll back onto that pole that I have it on and we can go back to the front of the frame. Oh, okay, you're gonna let me go first. See, I couldn't have done this by myself today. Thank you for being my camera lady. Okay, and I'm just gonna put my batting on my backing. Oh, 
Sorry. It's like having a dog on a chain. You got to stay close or you get pulled. <laughs> okay, and now, and also because I don't have all these stabilizers in it, my quilt is very light. It's not heavy like it is usually on your frame. Um, T-shirt quilts get so heavy when you're making them. Okay, so now I'm going to lay this T-shirt quilt on this batting. What? Batting picky side up or down? So the batting that I'm using doesn't have a right or wrong side because it's Quilter's Dream Batting. Um, if I did not know what side to do, I would take a pin and I would poke it through and whatever side my pin easily poked through, I would know to make that side the top, okay? Because I can never figure out if, if the pokies are up or down on this batting. I try to look at it and then I second guess myself. So I always do the pin test. But if you use Quilter's Dream batting, you don't have to worry about that. Whoa! Uh, connect it again. Okay. We have another question. What's the question? How do you handle the rolling edges of the t shirts because they aren't stabilized? Ha ha ha. Great question. Um, I rolled with it. Ha ha. No. Uh, Seriously, I really did. So as I was piecing my t-shirts when they were rolling, I just kind of, seriously, I just kind of massaged it while I was piecing it back out. I did not worry about it being perfect, and you will see that once you get a better view of my t-shirt quilt. It's not perfect, um, but it's perfect enough, and it's going to look great after I quilt it, and I will try to post a picture of it after I quilt it, because I will quilt it this week or beginning of next week because it's already Thursday. I don't know. But I did have to fight the roll of the t-shirts a little bit. Okay, so, and you're gonna see, and hey, let me, let me tell you another rule that I broke. I didn't press everything, like after I would sew it, because some of these t-shirts, you know, have that, have the, print that will smear if you accidentally touch it with your ruler. So some of them like got finger pressed open. Some of them got an iron somewhat touched to them. I'm telling you, I broke so many rules making this quilt. Um, but here you go. I'm going to lay this out real nice and neat so you can get a better view of it before I finish completely loading it on the quilt, on, on the frame, um, to give you a better look of what it looks like real quick. And you can see, I mean, please don't judge me as a quilter, but you can see that I just put scraps, scraps together where my t-shirts didn't add up. Look, look at this scrap right here, y'all. It's like a triangle. <laughs> I mean, I have scraps just everywhere, okay? Um, so... This is what it looks like right now. I'm going to post a picture when I finish it. But now that I've got it all nice and neat, what I'm, I'm going to kind of just fold it right here. And then I'm going to pick it up. And I'm going to let it rest on this front bar so it holds the weight of everything. Again, I showed this to y'all when I loaded a quilt the other day. Okay. And then... Let's talk about quilting this. Oh, do y'all see the dip? It's got a nice dip. I'm gonna keep this dip the entire time I'm quilting this. If I don't, my quilt will get that curl at the end because this is stretchy minky and it will curl if I keep it too tight on my frame. So when you are quilting with a minky back, you have got to keep it loose. You've got to keep it loose. So here is the tips on quilting a t-shirt quilt. Number one, if you're going to meander, which I highly recommend meandering t-shirt quilts, do your stitch length at nine stitches per inch, okay? It will help you get through it better. And if you've stabilized your t-shirts and you're having any issues with stitches, with your stitches, um, I can't even talk, with your threads breaking or shredding, it'll help you get through it a little bit quicker, okay? If you're gonna do a computerized design, which I think I am going to, um, do one that is not very dense, okay? Don't do a dense design on t-shirt quilts. 
because you are still going to be fighting even if your t-shirts are stabilized with some of the weird prints on these t-shirts still wanting to get clogged up or messed up while you're quilting through them so do a less dense design if you're going to do a computerized design okay um, I am going to do of course I'm going to fold this back and I'm going to do a plumb line across my batting and my backing before I even start and put and then line my quilt top up with that line before I tack everything down so those are all let me look at my notes Minky oh, one other thing. Another reason why I loaded my Minky selvage to selvage was so that that seam that I had to um, seam together, because Minky has got a big, fat, nasty, thick seam, is so that it could the seam could run horizontally on my frame, so that when I get to that seam, I'm quilting it all at one time, and then it's passing through. And that seam I have to press open, okay, or else you're going to get a big bulky nastiness in the middle of your quilt. But you do not want that seam running vertically or you're going to be dealing with quilting that seam the entire time you're quilting the quilt. You want to quilt it all in one pass and be done with it. Let's see. I have a question. Okay. It just says needle size. Um, well, needle size truly still depends upon the thread you're using, but I would say a size 16 or a size 18 is typically what you're going to do on a t-shirt quilt. Some people do bump up to an 18 um, and that's fine. Just make sure you're using at least a 50 weight thread. Any other questions? No other questions? Okay. I hope that I have not scared you today or made you lose confidence in me because I don't follow all the rules with t-shirt quilts. Hope I gave you some new ideas, maybe some encouragement that it's okay to not do everything perfect. What? Do you use a ballpoint needle? I don't know. I use whatever needle is in my machine. <laughs> um, I would actually have to just go look at the pack of needles that I have and see if they are the ballpoint needles and I'd have to go to Superior Threads website to see what letters are stand, stand for the ballpoint needles. So to be perfectly honest with you, I don't ever check to see if it's a ballpoint needle or not. Um, probably would probably do better with a ballpoint needle, but I've never paid attention to that. That is not a good answer, but that's the truthful answer. Um, sorry. Truth, honesty is the best policy, right? But I hope today I have given you um, some encouragement of you don't have to be perfect to make a t-shirt quilt. A finished t-shirt quilt is better than a perfect t-shirt quilt. I'm trying not to completely use Angela Walter's famous line as a finished quilt is better than a perfect quilt. Um, but seriously, go finish your t-shirt quilts. Have fun doing them. If you don't want to use stabilizer, try not using stabilizer. It actually might change your life. Who knows? But anyway, if there are no other questions, I hope you all have a great rest of your week. And um, we will see you next week for another live. Thank you.